Hello and welcome to News Central Television with me, Blessings Mosugu. The top stories at this hour. Alleged attempt to cart away sensitive materials from River State Electoral Commission's headquarters ahead of local government elections thwarted. ECOWAS moves to set up force to check the tide of terrorism in the region. Journalist and opposition candidate released from custody in Senegal. We have the details shortly. News now begins with updates on the political situation in River State where Governor Simielai Fubara has foiled an alleged attempt by a police team to take over the River State Independent Electoral Commission, RSIEC, during the wee hours of Friday. The policemen, who were said to have um, led, been led by Deputy Commissioner of Police Operations, attempted to scale through the gates to cart away sensitive electoral materials meant for the conduct of Saturday's local government election from RSIECS Strongroom. However, vigilant security officials alerted principal officers of the commission and relevant government authorities who immediately informed Governor Simelai Fubara of the development. Now, Governor Fubara, who mustered a team of government officials, lawmakers from the state and national assembly, top political stakeholders and other leaders to foil the attempt, addressed newsmen afterwards. The governor condemned the conduct of the policemen, saying that the IGP was taking his friendship with some Abuja-based politicians too far. He emphasized that local government election was the internal affairs of states and advised the IGP to avoid interference. I have to, I have to say this. On a very strong road, we've been taking enough nonsense from this institution. Everybody is aware of the court judgment. And even the judgment, judgment as they call it, the ruling, did the ruling specify anywhere that the election should not hold? He said, don't give voters register. What are we doing with it? Okay, police, don't provide security. Don't provide security. Is this the same thing as blocking the election? I don't know what the relationship between Inspector General of Police and one, 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 one person who claims he has so much power in this state. I don't know the relationship because it's beginning to go beyond the normal professional relationship. I said the, 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 the government wrote a letter with the judgment that we have to him. And what he's acting on is what, what he called the federal government, uh, the, 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 the judgment he got from the federal high court. The federal, the, if, even, even at that, if we should go by that, if the, the judgment in the federal high court, did he say election should be bad? Lifu, that, that justice that gave that, 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 that fraudulent judgment, did he say no election? Rather, he technically said, don't provide, don't provide. We don't need your, we don't need your security. We will provide our security. After all, it happened in Anambra. Go away with your security. But this election was whole. If you like whatever it is you want to do, do it. The election will result will be declared. People will be sworn in. I say it here. What kind of a country is it? And when it comes to the issue of River State, it becomes different. It's the eve of the River State local government election, and so far, drama and intrigues have not been in short supply. Now, in the latest coming out of the state after the alleged attempt by officers led by Deputy Commissioner of Police attempted to take away electoral materials from the headquarters of the River State Independent Electoral Commission, some pro-Fubara supporters have gathered in their numbers at the RSIEC office. Now, the election will hold so that the local government will become autonomous, yes. so that the, the workers will be benefiting and they also more get more employment from the local government because no one here here in River State River State is general language it's no one language we can has nothing to tell the youth in River State election must so it is him that we listen to election must so I'm the street commander election must so that's what I said nothing will happen we can has nothing to tell us election must so I'm from Calabari so election must so on a ten week here, making day in day. River State in our states. I will know use fear and grow for this state. In the rule, go Abuja, remember for that place. 
so that we seem they seem us they here so that everybody could do our thing. In the meantime, the River State Police Command has confirmed it will fully comply with the Federal High Court's judgment barring its involvement in the October 5 local government elections. This announcement came just 24 hours after key members of the People's Democratic Party, led by State Chairman Iron Chukwemeka, staged a protest against the election being conducted by the River State Independent Electoral Commission. Protesters marched to the headquarters of the Department of State Services and the State Police Command in Port Dacot, urging both agencies to respect the court's ruling and withdraw from participating in the poll. Now, while the police assured adherence to the court order, they emphasized that it would not prevent them from addressing any potential security concerns during the election. Once again, News Central's correspondent Austin Azu joins us on the news to speak further on this. Austin, uh, it's nice to have you join us again. Good afternoon. Um, now, you did give us an uh, update uh, earlier on, and I just want a follow-up uh, information on what's happening in that, uh, in that part of the country. Uh, currently, we are still at uh, the research uh, head office here in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. And uh, you can see behind me, a lot of people are coming into this particular area. And uh, they are, of course, the pro Fubara supporters. And they have taken over the Secretariat uh, complex. They actually blocked one of the one of the one of the ways uh, exit from uh, Port Harcourt down to A A Aba. But, however, their concerns and their consensus remains that uh, they won't leave this particular place. They want to ensure that uh, nobody comes to this particular facility to disrupt the process that is ongoing for the conduct of the local government elections bid for tomorrow. We spoke to a cross-section of them and they are actually optimistic that uh, they want the local government to be conducted. They want to join the 10 states in Nigeria that have done the local government elections and to ensure that they participate in the Supreme Court uh, decision that uh, no elected uh, uh, local government official that will be given the necessary support, of course, knowing fully well that uh, the fact comes from the federal government. But by and large, despite the rain, a lot of persons are still coming to this particular area. And it seems they have turned this place to a carnival. You can hear the, 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 the sound of the, of, the, of the music. And a lot of them have taken come with their drums. They are dancing and singing, eating. In short, some of them equally came with a pillow and mattress that they might likely going to sleep here to ensure that they are able to protect the facility here, that nobody comes to this particular place to disrupt the process. We still have security personnel on the ground here. We have the NSCDC, we have uh, other security agencies. Of course, the police have decided not to be part of the process, but we can still see some security personnel. Of course, the police, but they believe to be providing security for their various bosses. All right, uh, Austin, once again, thank you so much for gi giving us the update. Uh, very quickly, I just want to find out how this has disrupted the day-to-day -day activities. Um, are there um, limitations to movement? Uh, has this affected people's businesses so far? Uh, of course, where we are currently, uh, is, beside us is the uh, Nigeria Army Brigade. And uh, this particular route you are seeing here, happens to be one of the roads to Aba, and it's called the Aba Road. But however, you can see a lot of persons have come here for them to do their businesses as well. We can see hawkers, we can see a lot of persons selling one or two things. But nevertheless, of course, you know, today has been declared a public holiday, so a couple of those who are supposed to be at their workplace definitely might be at their homes. So obviously, a lot of ongoing transaction taking place while the people wait here to ensure that uh, what is perceived not to happen to the facility. So obviously, by and large, things are going on well across the, within this facility here. All right, uh, Austin, thank you so much for the update. Now, also joining us to discuss the political impasse in River State is a political affairs analyst, Dr. Sam Amadi. Thank you so much, Dr. Amadi, for joining us, and good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
Now, Dr. Amadi, I mean, we're seeing the whole drama unfold in River State, and I just want to ask, what are the implications of the alleged police attempt to take over the River State um, RSIEC on the integrity of the local government elections? Well, I think first it's clear that uh, any attempt to take over that operation will be will violate the law. Going by the electoral act, the conventions around the fair election. The independent, the independent Judicial Commission, what I think, federal state, is legally authorized and only so to commit election. So to take over the facility is to what the conduct of election. And again, that's, that's, that's against the law. And the electoral act was very explicit. It was very explicit about that. No order, of course, should be, should be made against to stop the electoral election being conducted. Of course, you can go back and challenge outcomes or even the, the election itself. So I think... Um, the role of the police, the police is smart enough. They have legal advisors who are also well informed. So their role is very clear. It would be not to in any way interfere with the conduct of the election. Again, the Supreme Court uh, is ruling in July this year, made it clear that with the clear direction that the local government should have elected officials. And part of the federal government directives also it's been trying to help to enforce that Supreme Court decision was that um, all elections should be completed by a certain date this month. And so it's a, both a judicial authority directives as well as executive directive. And I think the police rule should be clearly to ensure that the police rule. Now, the police thwarted in any way taking siege or vote or in any way impeding the exercise of the function of independent agents of the state is actually also raising issues around separation of power. Freedom of power. That is, if the state, federal police should not impede the exercise of legislative and executive function of the state. For example, the, the SEC of the state is created by law. Um, in that election has received judicial pronouncement by the federal uh, state High court of state that said it should vote on the fifth. You know, this police job will be if they are not going to support the agency to to conduct the election free and fair. It should be to protect you know, peace because the police has a neutral and constant responsibility peace and not to in any way impede. So going there to the offices and trying to seal the place or take an action to stop movement or exercise of function is not the work of it's at all. But there's no order that is authorized them either from the courts or from the executive branch of the legislature to in any way stop the conduct. Okay, um, I'm also curious to know, how will the People's Democratic Party's protest and the police's uh, subsequent assurance of compliance with the court ruling going forward after the elections, uh, after everything that unfolds, how would it affect the election's outcome? In, in many ways, first is actual participation. We hope there is no violence. I mean, if there is protest, we would expect that the PDP are by court. But the interesting thing about the PDP is the governor of the state who is going ahead to conduct an election in line with the, 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 the high court, the Supreme Court, and of course, the, the law establishing the uh, state electoral commission, is a PDP governor, at least up to today. And he's saying, I'll be the one to be affected by this boycott. So the PDP will invariably by court, but the PDP is taking the executive council, the executive of the state is the one that's loyal to me here, and they're taking the instructions for the federal. Uh, the national PDP leadership that's also uh, pro weekend. So we're going to see PDP by court. But again, by court in duly conducted election does not in any way invalidate the outcome. But at the national level, electoral acts are very clear that uh, when there's a by court, only one candidate, then that one candidate will be elected uh, according to the law. But again, yeah, there are many parties that are going to contest the election, uh, PDP or APC or both of them. Will not tend to the legality of election. Now, what will happen with it? If they are granted for a by court, it's a legal grant, and post the election, the courts validates the superior court. Now, we're, we're having conflict of courts. The federal court in control of uh, the weekend group, the state, the state court, evidently, seemingly supporting the government. So, if at the level of the court of appeal, the Supreme Court, the, the challenge against the legality of this election you know, succeeds, then it invalidates the conduct. But, not participating by per se will not validate the conduct. But again, it is an issue of legitimacy. We've seen that these elections have happened in 10 states, and each of them 
has come with uh, significant flaws and question of legitimacy and credibility of those elections. The river will not be any different. You expect that the APP that looks like the governor has now fully endorsed and supported would carry the day. It's just like the happened with Abga in Anambra, it happened with the APC in Imo, it happened with APC in Sokoto, it happened with uh, in Kwara, it happened, it's going to happen across the 36 states of the federation. Why? Because there's no democratic competitive elections at the state level because the governments are taking full control of the uh, And then um, it's not a, a diverse outcome. It's going to be the same outcome. But the question that is, would there be violence in most of these other places? There are not any serious violence. All right, uh, Mr. Amadi. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, very quickly, Dr. Amadi, we, we want to go on a short break, but we will still come back to continue the conversation um, after the break. So do stay with us. You're still live with us on the news. We'll be back. All right, thanks for staying with us. We're still talking about the political impasse in River States, and we still have our guest, political affairs analyst, Dr. Sam Amadi. Thank you, Dr. Amadi, for still staying with us. Now, um, I, I want to quickly um, chip in. You were talking, you were um, answering the second question before we went on break, but I want to quickly ask um, how might the events leading up to the election impact the voter turnout and the public confidence in the electoral process? Already we see youths on the street um, protesting. How do you think that this will? Um, translate in the elections? I, I, I think no doubt that this will lead to significant voter apathy. First, uh, it all also depends on how the police play their card. I mean, how two forces you know, take further action. If they're going to be uh, increase of violence, if they're going to be resort to street protests on that day, there's going to be some kind of uh, Use of violence, either from official state action, state sanctioned violence, private act of violence. Then it further scare away voters. Again, at this point, there's deep cynicism about uh, electoral outcomes in Nigeria. And so uh, people are not invested in the outcomes. Maybe they are part of a political brigade of uh, Ubara or Wiki, uh, will be less enthusiastic than vote. So they could just come out and vote if it's safe. There are zero uh, pro possibility of violence they come. But if there's some chance that the violence, there's not much, you know, at stake for them. Because give and take, we, if, we are, if the election holds, if the event holds, we are, we get his result. So I, I think already you see the do ownership protection with all the massive campaign, we just reported about 20.1% or so good uh, at so you can now see that this election, if you're going to get a single digit voter turnout, especially with the rhetoric going on, with the violence, with the street protests up and down, if you, you, you press the weekend sort of comment, you get to vote either way, PDP, as we can do not vote. And then, some of the people who are not looking good, but essentially not going to be enthusiastic or in the Fubara movement, who will stay, stay, stay away from the poor. So it's going to be, it's due to be a very good turnout. Rather than perhaps somebody get to office in the election where the political cover their business. But you have you have significant turnout to constitute a security challenge in terms of what happened. See those streets, those young ones in the street who are singing and dancing, they are invested in the outcome. They, they saw them see it as a matter of state sovereignty. It's a matter of like they say it's our state, we have to fight for our state. And so they, they are more than encouraged. There's a momentum for them to come out. So the dollars coming out just for the road coming out to protect whatever they consider, you know, their sovereignty, the ballot box, the, the, the power of Ubarra to the main governor and not to be displaced, out by what they now call as a major policy. So, yes, no terror, but again, you're going to see uh, intensity and some degree of uh, exuberance and open, uh, limited violence. Okay, um, also very quickly, how do you think that the election outcome will impact the political landscape of River State in general? It will impact massively. I mean, look, the whole weekend fight and it's primarily around 2027. So with this um, election, you are guaranteed that if you go host, if it holds, as it's going to hold, like, and Fubara gets the result he wants, you'll be fortified. First, the issue is also money, always money, money, money. So there, there's a sense in which uh, you're going to see the local governments are in control 
And then, even if as it is now, the PDP national leadership takes the party structure away from it, it has a governing team. It constitutes the APP, and would now a budget with political office, with capacity to mobilize political support in the local government areas. That is massive structure. So he has basically supplanted the weak structure at the local level where it matters. So it then means it's fully intact, irrespective of what the, the party uh, chieftains do in the Wadata uh, House in Abuja here. is on ground. And then that simply means that to, to, to now get him out in 2007, which is really what the game is about, to get him out and possibly make a way for the, the second, second, second time. It would be very difficult. You, know, you won't do that through votes. You won't do that with two public mobilization. He has got the resources to finance loyalty, to keep those loyal guys, to, to, to keep the support base strong. This election is actually that decisive. And that's why you are seeing you know, the highest level of expression and the, 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 the use of state force in very immoral, irresponsible way, including the confession of the judiciary, is because the stakes are very high. So they are pulling no punches to, to deliver results, either from Wiki or from Fuba. And whoever delivers results to tomorrow uh, will surely is the guy uh, who has a head start. He's up there in the battle for 2027. This is not about diverse people. Uh, this is about 2027. And it, it's a shame that uh, the other political uh, institutions, especially the courts and the, the security agencies, true to prophecy, in my paper, in my speech, if you know, I said, the strategy for election in Nigeria is drive IMA, drive judiciary, commander security. I will see that script, that strategic, simple strategy, repeat endlessly. And that's a shame, a shame because yeah, the body policy, INEC and the court should be in the court. In this case, they are not. Okay, um, very quickly, in 30 seconds, uh, I, I would like to ask, how will the situation in River State shape Nigeria's democratic trajectory and the 2027 general elections? Very quickly, please. Very quickly, it's going to shape it in good, positive, and negative. Look, what's happening today is important because the River State constitutes both the finance house, constitutes big literature, and the president won it controversial times last time, we want to do it again. And so what happens today, we oppose that to the possibility of what will put the seven uh, to the presidential election. That's why it matters. And it matters if Kubara, obviously, it's not weaker, weaker is for the president. In that way, Kubara wins, the president has big deal to plan to get back to the seven. All right, uh, Dr. Sam Amadi, political affairs analyst, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And now to judicial matters. Justice Marianne Anneni of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory has issued a public summons against the immediate past governor of Kogi State, Yahya Belu, to attend court in answer to a fresh 16 count pending allegations against him. Now, by the summons, the former governor is to attend court on October 24 in response to the summons and for his arraignment along with two other defendants. Justice Aneni issued the order for public summons in a ruling following an application by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Justice Aneni ordered the EFCC to publish the public summons in a widely circulating newspaper. She also ordered the EFCC to paste copies of the public summons at the former governor's last known address and in conspicuous places on court premises. Let's also tell you that Justice Evelyn Maha of the Federal High Court in Abuja has issued an order barring the Directorate of Road Traffic Services, also called the Vehicle Inspection Office, VIO, from further stopping vehicles on the road, impounding or confiscating vehicles, and imposing fines on motorists. In a judgment on Thursday, Justice Maha issued the order on a fundamental rights enforcement suit filed by a human rights activist and public interest attorney, Abu Bakr Mashal. Also affected by the order are the Director of Road Transport, the Area Commander Jabi, and the Team Leader Jabi, and the Minister of the, e of the FCT, also listed as respondents. Now, Justice Ma upheld Marshall's argument that no law empowers the respondents to stop, impound, confiscate, seize, or impose fines on motorists. Now, the Yoruba community in Bornu State has called for urgent support for its 4,600 members 
who were affected by the recent flooding that submerged 70% of Maiduguri and its environs. The president, Saka Abiodun, while speaking with newsmen in Maiduguri, said most affected are artisans struggling for survival. Abiodun lamented that the food flood disasters have destroyed homes and infrastructure, displacing hundreds of families. Their sources of livelihood and property were also affected, causing a lack of access to basic necessities like shelter, food, clean water and health care. He solicited individuals, corporate organizations and government agencies to come to their aid. The community president, however, commended the state government for its prompt response to provide succor to the flood victims. Now, the Arewa Consultative Forum Social Cultural Group in Nigeria has expressed deep concern over the escalating insecurity in northern Nigeria, which is severely affecting farming and livelihoods. Following a sympathy visit to Borno State, the Arewa Consultative Forum called on the federal government to take immediate and decisive action to address the alarming rates of violence, kidnapping, and banditry in the region. News Central's Umoru Kirara reports that the forum, while donating 20 million naira to aid recovery of victims, called for enhanced support for the flood victims who have suffered significant losses. Our position is further worsened by the fact that uh, the insurgency and banditry had even stopped our people from going to farm. We have so many, many farmers that can no longer produce the food that we eat. Um, we have millions of out-of-school children. Al-Majri and the Bara has become a very serious social ill. And if you put all this together, you can understand that we are in a very, very seriously um, a dire situation. What the ACF has done so far was to, first of all, realize the danger in which all of us are, and also realize that if nothing is done, this can actually um, expand and grow and uh, threaten our own existence. Ten years ago, there was not a single bandit in the Northwest, for example. Today, most of the states in the Northwest have got banditry situation. We are frightened of the possibilities that uh, this can also grow in the next five years to ten. We do not know what can happen to our existence as northern Nigeria until very seriously urgent actions, positive definite actions that is going to be directed squarely to bring in these ills to an end as soon as possible, the danger will be really, really, really uh, unimaginable. Now, the Economic Community of West African State, ECOWAS, heads of state and government, are set to establish a 5,000 strong kinetic force to combat terrorism in the region. Now, this decision follows the alarming disclosure that 1,605 terror attacks were recorded across West Africa between January and August 2024, resulting in 6,956 deaths. ECOWAS Commission President Omar Toure shared these figures during an international lecture organized by the News Agency of Nigeria in Abuja on Thursday. Toure, represented by Isaac Armstrong, Program Officer for Regional Security, broke down the statistics. Burkina Faso accounted for 611 attacks and 3,810 fatalities. Mali saw 546 attacks with 1,424 deaths. Nigeria experienced 238 attacks with 905 fatalities. Niger reported 153 attacks and 676 deaths. Benin recorded 44 attacks with 66 fatalities. And Togo saw 13 attacks with 75 deaths. Now, Toure emphasized that while the original initiative is critical, it does not absolve in, uh, individual member states of their responsibility to ensure national security. 
A total of 180 Nigerians stranded in Libya returned home on Wednesday evening in a significant humanitarian effort. The group landed at Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos at around 7.30 p.m. on a chartered Al Burak Airlines flight. The returnees included 67 adult females, 55 adult males, 24 female children, 18 male children and 16 infants. Now, the evacuation was made possible through a collaboration between the International Organization for Migration, IOM, and the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Lagos Territorial Office. Now, upon arrival, the Nigerian Immigration Service conducted biometric profiling of the returnees to ensure proper documentation and provide necessary support. Various government agencies were also on hand to offer humanitarian assistance, helping the returnees reintegrate into society. This latest evacuation highlights IOM's ongoing commitment to supporting Nigerians stranded abroad, ensuring their safe return and safeguarding their rights and dignity. The Lagos State Government, through the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, LAMATA, continues with a trail ride on the Lagos Rail Mass Transit L uh, LRMT Red Line on Thursday, October the 3rd, 2024. The train we took off from Oyingbo train station marks a crucial step towards the official launch of the metro system aimed at transforming public transportation in Lagos. New Central's Chidima Ona has more. In a bid to enhance seamless and efficient commuting for Lagosians, President Bola Tinibu commissioned the Red Line Rail in February 2024. Spanning 37 kilometers, the north-south rail route connects Agbado to Marina, with 14 stations along the way. Currently, there's one train in operation, but six additional trains are expected in the first quarter of 2025, three for the red line and three for the blue line. During the recent test ride, the head of corporate communications Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority highlighted the station's operational guidelines, emphasizing how these measures will ensure smooth and hassle-free commuting for passengers. The first thing you need to use the system is your carry card. This is a card that is used by all regulated transport services in Lagos State. And so you need to fund your card for your trip to be able to, to use it. Then when you get to the station, you go through the turnstile, from the turnstile, you come to the platform. At the platform, you are supposed to stand behind the dotted lines, the yellow line. We have a monitoring center where you know the movement of the train is, is monitored. And uh, if there's going to be any obstruction on the train system, there's a way also to communicate with the ground staff and even the driver on the train. Several Lagosians on board share their experiences praising the speed and efficiency of the trains. Many highlighted how the rail system has significantly improved their commuting experience by offering a faster and safer alternative to navigating the city's often congested roads. It's more faster, like an hour to where I'm going, wherever I'm going. So if I'm going through the, the, if I'm going through the bus, at least two or three hours, but with the train and how I is okay, I'll get there very fast. Actually, this is my first time of, you know, boarding the train from Oyimbo down to Aguado. Now we are, we are going from Aguado down to Oyimbo. It's quite, it's okay. Smooth, no itches at all. I'll be using it. It's, it's, it's very, it's very smooth. The, the, you know, the, the road is very smooth and there's no, you know, it's comfortable. The Lagos State Government seems clearly in its commitment to improving the city's transport infrastructure. An introduction of the red line is a significant milestone in reducing traffic congestion and promoting efficient public transit across Lagos. In Lagos for New Central, Chidima Ona. And now two journalists and an opposition candidate in Senegal were released from custody on Thursday after being summoned over remarks critical of the Prime Minister and the police, according to their lawyers. Journalists Cheikh Yerim Sek and Bugani Gwei Dani, a candidate in the upcoming parliamentary elections, had been questioned for challenging financial figures presented by Prime Minister Osman Sonko. 
And last week, Sonko described Senegal's economic situation as catastrophic, accusing the previous administration of manipulating financial data. The government, which has been in office since April, is facing mounting criticism from the opposition and rights groups over a series of convictions, detentions and police summons targeting political figures and journalists. Now, e-hailing drivers in Johannesburg will be protesting uh, following a tragic incident that has drawn attention to a rising violence they face while working. A heartbreaking video circulating on social media shows an e-hailing driver being brutally shot and killed by two men posing as customers. This shocking act of violence reminds of the dangers that many drivers encounter each day as they provide a vital transportation service. In response to this latest and horrific crime, e-hailing drivers are uniting to demand justice, security and better protection measures. Still to come, Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris campaigns with Lee Cheney in crucial swing state of Wisconsin. We'll tell you more after the break. Join us again. Now, Democratic White House candidate Kamala Harris hit the campaign trail on Thursday alongside Lee Cheney, a prominent Republican critic of Donald Trump. The pair appeared together in Wisconsin, a crucial state, a swing state, where Cheney, the daughter of former Vice President Dick Cheney, urged Americans to reject Trump and support his rival. Vice President Harris and the former Congresswoman addressed moderate Republicans and independents, calling for patriotism to take precedence over partisanship in the upcoming election. Cheney's message emphasized the need to stand against Trump's influence within the Republican Party. Meanwhile, Trump held a rally in Michigan, another key battleground state, where he repeated false claims of election fraud claims that led to the violence of January 6th. His appearance followed a significant legal development on Wednesday in his criminal case over an alleged plot to overturn the 2020 election, with prosecutors arguing he had no presidential immunity for his private criminal effort and revealing new evidence of his alleged misconduct. I tell you, I have never voted for a Democrat, but this year I am proudly casting my vote for Vice President Kamala Harris. And in this country, under our Constitution, our President has a particular solemn obligation to ensure and guarantee the peaceful transfer of power. Since the beginning of the Republic, every President in our history has fulfilled that duty. Every President until Donald Trump. We love our country and that that really is the binding factor in us all being together and taking the time to be together to really just renew and remind everyone of what is at stake, but born out of love that we have this fight. And I want to thank you, Liz Cheney, for reminding us that that, regardless of party affiliation, is a factor that binds us all. But Liz Cheney really is a leader who puts country above party and above self, a true patriot, and it is my profound honor, my profound honor to have Now, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has called on the West to lift sanctions on the Taliban-led Afghanistan and take responsibility for reconstruction efforts in the country. He said this while speaking at the opening of an annual Russia-led diplomatic forum on Afghanistan involving envoys from the Taliban and neighboring countries in the Middle East and Central Asia. Lavrov, however, did not say Moscow would lift its own designation of the group as a terrorist organization. The Taliban has been under Western sanctions for more than two decades now, measures imposed to restrict the financing of al-Qaeda and other organizations designated terrorist groups. And Moscow has fostered relations with the Taliban since they returned to power in 2021, following the U.S. withdrawal from the war-ravaged country.
Кабула. В дискуссии мы хотели бы снова акцентировать неприемлемость возвращения военной инфраструктуры третьих стран на территорию Афганистана или размещения новых военных объектов в соседних с ним государствах под какими бы то ни было предлогами. President Claudia Schimbaum on Thursday unveiled a package of proposals to boost gender equality days after becoming the first woman to lead the Latin American nation. She said the proposed reforms, which will be submitted to a Congress dominated by her ruling party, included guarantees of wage equality, a life free of violence and financial support for women over 60. The changes would also incorporate the concept of substantive equality which aims to remedy disadvantages faced by women rather than achieving gender neutrality into the constitution. The former Mexico City mayor was sworn in Tuesday as leader of the world's most populous Spanish-speaking country, which has had 65 male presidents since independence. Como primera presidenta de México, nuestra obligación pues, es proteger a las mujeres. Entonces, queremos que en la Constitución, en el artículo cuarto, quede la igualdad sustantiva y también el derecho a una vida libre de violencias, no solo para las mujeres, sino para las y los adolescentes, las y los niños. Pero, lamentablemente, a veces una mujer que vive violencias no sabe que está viviendo violencias. O una mujer que gana menos que un hombre cuando realiza el mismo trabajo no sabe que su derecho es percibir el mismo salario. Now to sports, the Nigerian Football Federation is presently holding its 2024 annual General Assembly at the Unity Hall of the Delta State Government House in Asaba, with all delegates having arrived at the state capital on Thursday. The biggest assemblage of football administrators and stakeholders in the country in a given year serves as the melting pot of interplay of ideas and eventual formulation of policies, rules and regulations that govern the administration and organization of the game nationally for the succeeding one year. And the plenary will welcome chairmen and secretaries of football associations in the 36 states and the FCT, chairmen and secretaries of the Nigeria Premier Football League, Nigeria National League, Nigeria Women Football League and the Nationwide League One, as well as chairmen and secretaries of the Referees Association, Players Union and Coaches Association. Still in sports, Olympic de Marseille has expressed strong disagreement with a three-match ban given to their sporting director, Mehdi Benatia. The club asserts that Benatia did not insult or threaten any match officials. Reports suggest Benatia confronted referees during halftime of Marseille's 3-2 win over Lyon on 22 September following a red card shown to Leonardo Ballardi. The French Football League LFP announced Benatia's ban, including a three-match suspended suspension from official functions. And that's all on the news at this hour. But before we go, let's take another look at some of our major stories. Now, we did tell you that alleged attempt to cart away sensitive materials from River State Electoral Commission's headquarters ahead of the local government elections thwarted. We also mentioned ECOWAS moves to set up force to check the tide of terrorism in the region. And finally, we told you that journalists and opposition candidates have been released from custody in Senegal. You can watch News Central Live on DSTV channel 422, Star Times channel 274, Avo TV and YouTube. Many thanks for watching. I'm Blessings Mosugu.